Hello guys, we are trying to create a repository of required videos for all embedded and PLSI students. Last video was about course structure and placement scenarios of CDAC. We have covered why students should opt for CDAC short term courses and also about placement insights of various CDAC centers in this part 1. Now this video is second part in continuation of previous video and it's about CCAT exam pattern and preparation strategy. CCAT is all India entrance exam for CDAC courses. You will also listen about the detailed course modules from MUI. Stay tuned to our channel for more such informative videos. You can post your suggestion for topics you want us to cover in the comment section. Thank you. So the CDAC exam, uh, it depends. It's not, I would not say that it is very difficult and I would not say that it is very easy because uh, CDAC um, has 24 centers in 24, 24 different cities in India. So uh, you have many options, but the problem is that uh, only there is a huge gap between uh, only a select few of these 24 cities have good centers. Uh, so uh, there is a huge difference between the quality of teaching, the placement support, and uh, so on between uh, some of these centers and the other centers. So to get into a good institute, you need to have at least have a rank of at least uh, below 2000. Um, I think around 10,000 people uh, gave the exam when I was giving it. And since it is getting more and more popular, this course, um, I see the competition only increasing. And so the exam pattern, uh, the exam pattern, the CDAC exam is divided into three sections, section A, section B, and section C. And uh, section A is English plus general aptitude, quantitative reasoning, verbal and so on. Section B is related to computers, uh, computer fundamentals, networking, data structures, object-oriented programming, code snippets and so on. They, everything will be tested in section B. And section C is optional. Uh, only those who want to opt for VLSI or electronics based courses like VLSI uh, embedded systems will have to appear for the section C. It will contain uh, information, uh, questions about uh, electronics and telecommunication core questions relating to the em embedded systems or VLSI, uh, computer ar architecture, uh, digital e electronics and so on. So uh, there are these three sections. Each, to complete each section, section, you have one hour and there will be 60 questions. So one minute for each question, I guess. So this will be definitely easier than gate. Uh, as gate is gate has become very competitive. It is and gate uh, gives you an entry into PSUs and master's level courses into premier institutes like IIT, BITS and so on. Uh, I would say that it is much, much easier than gate. Any uh, common normal student can give this exam. So it works exactly like uh, other allotment processes work like your G or NEET allotment. Um, it works on, on the basis of your rank. So the better rank you get, the more premier institutes you'll get into. Uh, yeah, so as I suggested, um, in the top thousand if you get a rank into the top thousand you'll get the best institutes you'll have many options the best institutes are um, in Pune the uh, main headquarters of CDAC is in Pune um, and they have their advanced computing training school there so uh, you'll get there only if you have uh, a rank around 500 and Otherwise, in Pune, there are other options like Sunbeam, ISCSD, 
so uh, you can get into these institutes till about 1500 uh, there are good institutes in uh, mumbai and hyderabad and Bang bengaluru also so overall i would suggest that uh, try to at try to get uh, into the first 1000 rank otherwise uh, 1500 also is okay 2000 i i would uh, think a bit above 2000 i would not suggest that uh, i don't know how the scenario is right now but uh, i would still not suggest so uh, as you'll give uh, the rank is not branch wise but it is section wise so as you will give most students will give a plus b and those who will opt for electronics courses will give uh, the section c also so uh, they will have two brand two ranks one is a plus b and one is a plus b plus c so the those who opt for electronics courses will only be competing against uh, the other others who have uh, opted for the, for the same courses so uh, the ranks will be section wise a plus b and a plus b plus c yeah so about my preparation strategy i would say that um, uh, in your last semester when your last semester starts uh, you will be preparing for the campus placements and all the other things um, in your uh, college so uh, this exam will also require the same for tier 3 colleges as far as um, i know most of their placements come from it companies and uh, and even if you are from opting for core placements uh, most of these companies will have an aptitude test will have uh, a programming test or coding test and so on so you will need the same uh, knowledge over here to uh, appear for this exam so start preparing uh, in when your last semester begins so that uh, after you complete your uh, exam and uh, graduation everything all the procedures in may you can appear for the exam in june um, yeah so uh, for aptitude you can refer to uh, rs agarwal for uh, english verbal uh, you can uh, refer to uh, renan martin uh, otherwise uh, you can there are uh, also uh, pre courses for uh, cdac uh, so there are some private institutions like sunbeam which also provide uh, a crash course in coding and uh, you know aptitude and so on so you can attend those the more you read about uh, programming the more uh, you read about networking dns almost all of your questions uh, for electronics and telecommunication and um, it background will be from what you have learned during these four years so uh, just revise your uh, programming fundamentals uh, object oriented and uh, object oriented programming data structures um, aptitude and especially networking uh, a lot of people uh, study networking during their course but then uh, ignore it later on and uh, a lot of questions are based on networking so networking is an important part uh, network communication uh, so you'll need to revise all of that uh, and for aptitude general aptitude will be rs agarwal and all will be enough so uh, during the course uh, it is quite intensive as i mentioned before sometimes we have we had 15 hours of classes yes with uh, a lunch break and a tea break in between but otherwise it went on for 15 hours 12 hours and it gets very hectic um, every day there will be assignments for you to complete uh, there will be theoretical classes in the morning and practical class classes in the evening so or vice versa according to the batches they'll uh, change it around so uh, the theoretical uh, in theoretical classes in the class they will teach you the concepts they'll teach you the uh, 
coding and so on and then you'll they'll give you assignments which you have to practice in the uh, in the lab so uh, after you have completed the assignments every week they will have uh, a module test if after a completion of every module they will have a test and then uh, after every month also they will have another test and then at the end of uh, the six months course they will have a main exam called uh, CCPP or something like that, which all the CDAC branch, uh, CDAC branches in India will appear at the same time. And you'll be allotted centers. You'll have to uh, give exams. Uh, this will go on for about like 10, 15 days. Um, every day there'll be uh, an exam for one course. Um, it will be online MCQ. So, yeah. And other than that, you'll also have to submit a project. And unlike many tier three colleges, um, they evaluate it very strictly. So, I will specifically talk about the DAC course, uh, Diploma in Advanced Computing. Um, as I said before, this course is, uh, teaches you everything about software development it is a very generalized course so you will have uh, you learn front end development with technologies like javascript angular uh, i have heard that they have changed uh, from angular to react right now uh, when i when i completed the course it was angular so you learn html css javascript angular jquery express and so on in the front end and on the back end, you'll learn uh, Java, um, both core and advanced, which is a main part of uh, the DAC course. Uh, and it goes on for like uh, an entire month. So it takes, uh, they have a lot of focus on Java. And then uh, another technology back end uh, development, you learn something like C sharp. So it keeps changing according to what the industry demands are. Um, I'm talking about uh, when I completed the course in 2019. So this was the, uh, these, these were the modules. And then uh, we also had database management systems, both structured and non-structured. So structured, we were taught uh, MySQL and non-structured uh, MongoDB. Other than that, they also teach you software engineering principles, design principles, how do you do documentation. And there is also a, a module for personality development, which helps you crack um, interviews and do presentations, um, write emails and so on. So the per primary purpose of the course was to bridge the gap between uh, college and the industry. And I think it delivers on that pr promise. So um, I would suggest anyone to, uh, I'm really happy with the results that it has given me. And almost everything that I am using right now is from what I learned during these uh, six months. Almost I completed my engineering, four years of engineering, but I'm almost not using uh, any of the knowledge that I gained there right now. So whatever I'm working on is from those uh, six months. And yeah, I would suggest anyone to pursue the course. It really changes your outlook on everything and um, you come out learning a lot. The course is divide, uh, designed in such a way that uh, it will be most mostly beneficial for those who do not want to spend years uh, in pursuing gate and then in tech so in within six months uh, you will be taught so much that you will be uh, ready to get into the it industry or uh, the electronics industry so my general tip would be start preparing for the uh, exam uh, in your final semester just um, have a look at CDAC and various alternative options uh, for what you want to do. 
um and i would say that if you get into cdac if you are um you need you'll probably be staying outside and because it's a rigorous course then try to uh you know maintain your health um because that will go a long way uh, you don't want to once you fall in during these six months then uh, missing four days will be like missing a lot so yeah um, i wish you all the best uh, in your future i hope you all get through and get good placements thank you all